one of the benefits of having a shared kind of team the way we've built it is uh, we, we, we have a full-time guy that does nothing but quality check every one of the VAs or every one of the uh, phone people um, you know, on, on the conversion rates and, and how many dials does it take to get a connection into mm. a qualified appointment, right? And so um, I never thought, I never thought I could build a, an offshore team. I just didn't think we could do that. And not only have we done that, but we've turned it into one of the best selling points. And, 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 and if anybody's out there listening to this right now, write this down. And if you've got a, an offshore phone person, that one of the questions the seller will ask is, where are you calling from? If they hear any accent at all. And so we've actually, every single day, we embrace those objections and we mm -hmm. come up with the perfect words to forward the sale. So our team is scripted where they'll say, I'm, I'm actually calling from the Philippines, um, Trevor or whoever our member is, Trevor Mock or Gary Boomershine or insert your name, hired me in the Philippines so he or she can pay higher prices for properties. Mm. And how am I doing? Is there any feedback that I could give to Mr. Mock mm. on how I'm doing? And we have a 100% stick rate with the yeah. sellers. They love it and it forwards the conversation. That's so we cool. now want them to ask that because they see it as a benefit. What's up, y'all? Coming at you with an awesome, awesome episode with two amazing guests. I had a chance to hop on with them in their community a couple of weeks ago. And I've known Gary for years. I'm going to introduce you guys to Gary Boomershine uh, here in a second. And Robert, Se Robert Seifert, shoot, we, we connected probably two, three years ago the first time. And I've been so impressed with, with what both of you guys have been doing for the real estate investor market, obviously helping a lot of agents now as well with what you guys are doing uh, with realestateinvestor.com. And guys, guys and guys, what I wanted to do is bring these two on here because they're uh, masters at lead management, follow-up, offline marketing, especially a lot of our clients work with investor or with real estate investor.com. A lot of our clients are on the CRM that was formerly investor PO and now real estate investor.com and vice versa. A lot of their clients work with us. So we're going to be talking about some data that they're seeing uh, as it relates to direct mail, what's happening with direct mail right now. Uh, what are they seeing with follow-up and lead follow-up that's working? What should you be baking into your sequences, whether you're an investor or an agent and all together, we're just going to talk about some cool stuff, like what's going on in the industry. So I want to welcome on both of you guys onto the carrot cast for the first time and probably not the last, but uh, welcome on Gary and Rob. Good to see you. Yeah, it's you. awesome. This is uh, Gary Boomershine and um, Robert, I'll have you introduce yourself, but gosh, it's great to be here, Trevor. I, you know, you, you, I got goosebumps because I remember the very first time we met, I believe um, it was back. We called ourselves the new ruse back in mm. like 2006. <laughs> yeah, it was That's, a while ago. <laughs> right. And a lot of us, um, the new ruse, because there were the gurus, right? The old school creative guys. And then mm -hmm. we, we were starting. I remember Fan Merrill was just sort of like just getting started. And it's great, man. It's been what a what an interesting ride. I've been full-time myself since 2004, full-time real estate. I came out of kind of a combination of real estate as a background. I grew up in a family business, but also I went down the technology path. I Right here in Silicon Valley, I did four super well-funded um, Silicon Valley technology companies. And I was also at uh, Accenture, which is Arthur Anderson, Anderson Consulting. And man, <clears throat> working 60, 70, 80 hour weeks inside of a building and never getting out to see the light. It was great experience, but it was like no opportunity. And I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I'm like, my wife and I, let's do it. <laughs> and that was 2004. And I've never looked back since. It's awesome. I really love like sharing what's worked because I think all of us in this business are connected mm. more than yep. we know. It's really, it's like our own tribe, a really cool group of people. And, um, gosh, some of my best friends are here and I know, you know, Robert and I met, uh, we were like one step, a half of a degree of separation, Robert Seifert and I, because he had amazing technology and I had the REI vault uh, services side doing massive amounts of direct mail. We were on top of the podio. We now call that polio. And we basically <laughs> said, man, if we could marry up your follow-up capability, your technology, and we could marry it up with the, the, the team that we have, I think it'd be like peanut butter 
and mm. uh, and chocolate. And so it's been a great ride. So Robert, <laughs> with that, yeah. and it has, it's absolutely peanut butter and chocolate. Um, <laughs> if you like peanut butter and chocolate, yeah, I do. Right. So it works. Oh, well dude, it's one, one of my favorites, chocolate. man. One of my favorites. Yeah, I, I love it on ice cream, which is not good for me, but I haven't had that in a long time, except for once in the last 80 something days. But Dude, that's, that, that's, that's what I want to talk about towards the end of this as well as kind of the journey that you've been on non-related to real estate, but yeah. everybody, I'm, I'm going to plant a seed and we'll come back to it in, uh, at the end is, uh, is Robert's been doing something called the 75 hard. And, and that was introduced, I think a year or two ago by uh, man, I'm blanking out. Andy Frazella. And Andy Frazella. And uh, it was really cool seeing your updates, Robert, uh, every single day, the little videos you'd be posting, things like that. Because when someone posts something once, twice, three times, they're like, oh, someone's like posting a workout video. But then once you get in a week, you're in a month, you're in 70 days, you're 60, whatever it is. Once someone gets past like three weeks, there's something going on with that person in a good way. Like there's a rewiring of the brain. So uh, I've experienced, okay. I want to talk with you about that at the end, but let me toss it back over to you. So who yeah. are you, man? Um, how did you get into real estate? And then we're going to dive into some of the specifics to, that we talked about that you guys are seeing in the market with your investors. Yeah, I'll make mine sweet and simple, right? I'm the guy that grew up in a happy married household. My parents have been married for 43 years, I think now, 44 years. Um, go to school, get good grades, get a good job. But I was intrigued by real estate since Russ Whitney commercial and saying you just needed to own one other house. Hmm. And so there was always this draw, read a lot of books, but did the thing I was taught in life. And I spent well over a decade not doing real estate. Then I went to a rich dad, poor dad seminar, read all of his books. And that was that was during the first crash. I was actually in the mortgage industry. So tied to real estate in a different way. That was my foot in the door, so to speak, right? Tried to try to do one house back then and still never really went all in. And until I was working for a finance company and really just changing my perspective on structure and corporation. And I, I believe uh, the good Lord just led me down a path to learn very specific things that I needed to learn first. Mm. Then in 2013, yeah, late 2013, early 2014, after a lot of life events, um, I just did a light bulb clicked and said, it's time to burn the boats and go all in. Mm-hmm. And the reason I never got where I wanted to is because I just didn't go all into the thing that was passionate inside of me. And that's, yep. that was my never looked back, went into real estate and it's turned into a software company and a whole bunch of other stuff I never envisioned. But I'm just, I, I like to believe I'm just riding the path that has already been destined for me. Mm. And I'm, I'm enjoying the ride and I'm a faithful believer that it's all for the good and it's for the better of the people, right? Yep. So your point, I love being on this with you and I love what I'm doing with Gary because we all, at least I know for certain, come from one place of serving the people. And I don't remember, I, I always forget because I've listened to so many great people. I think it was Zig Ziglar who said it best. You can have everything you ever want if you just give enough other people what it is they want. Mm, dude, that, that's one of my favorite quotes. I absolutely love yeah. that one. So be, before, before we dive into, into what you guys do, realestateinvestor.com now, I kind of want to give people some context. So uh, Gary, you started investing in real estate in 2004. Uh, Robert, you, you started investing, I think it's 2013, 2014. Is that what you, you Full time. Full, full time. time. Uh, full time. Um, so what, 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 what did you guys do on the real estate investing side of things? Were you guys house or where are you guys house flippers, wholesalers, buy and buy and hold kind of, what did that journey look like from 2004 for you, Gary, and then same thing for you, uh, Robert, you the last six or seven years. And then how did that transition happen and what you guys are doing now? Because, uh, that, that I think is an interesting transition. Cause I, I know a lot of wholesalers out there or flippers where it's an amazing way to generate active income. Um, but then when they really look at it, they go, that's not, that wasn't my dream to be flipping transactions my whole life. For most people, it was a means to an end. Many just don't actually make the shift to get off of the means and, and move towards the end. And uh, you guys have I've done that in a great job with serving other investors and now agents to help systemize their businesses better so they can be investors and they don't have to be full-time marketers or lead managers. So what did you guys journey look like into real estate that took you where you are right now? You want to start Robert? You want me to start? I'll, I'll start. Mine's probably shorter since it's a shorter time frame. Mine is really simple. I decided to go all in and I was that hustling wholesaler, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that was it. Like, I'm going to make it or break it. I'm going to give this everything I got. And so I started off wholesaling. I very quickly, without, without knowing the term, I later learned there was a term for it called reverse wholesaling. 
I started reaching out to everyone in my network. I landed the buyers first. I ended up landing a really big buyer and few from my relationships that I discussed. And then that spiraled into letting me hustle really hard to go get a whole bunch of properties, JV deals. Um, so in that, I said yes to a lot of things, um, right? Which hustlers tend to do. So I ended up owning a property management company and building it to 500 doors rather quickly. I started flipping houses because I noticed my buyers were buying rental properties. So that turned me what is uh, the term turnkey property. So I was wholesaling and turnkey. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from that, because I managed doors and I had that, it turned into the brand that I had in real estate, which is, and still do USA portfolio real estate, um, highly focused on really, uh, for those of you that have ever heard of Kent Clothier, the Clothier family in Memphis and best, I actually flew out and, and wanted to duplicate their model. He was one of my big mentors back then, mm -hmm. um, and changed my business model to be very specific in what I produced mm. fully turnkey, fully managed properties done for you the right way, all the way from beginning to end. And then I moved States. I started to build a system for myself on Podio to automate the entire business so that what I had created could be expanded throughout markets, right? I wanted to do massive growth. I was in two markets, Michigan and Florida, which I still am today. And, but I no longer turnkey. I sold the property management business and all that happened because I went into this mastermind, this collection of great minded people shared something that I did with this software that was going to blow up my own business for me. And they said, Dead Podio doesn't do that. So, well, it does when you spend a lot of money and you have yeah. the right people that do it. And so that turned into, well, how can we have what you have? That started the name Investor PO. We actually gave actually some clones of our Podio in the very first iterations of this. And then three months later, my tech guy flew me out to San Diego and said, dude, there's a way bigger opportunity than houses than you yeah. realize. And there's a big, massive need in your industry and you should probably fill it. Mm. I'm like, all right. And then I got to learn about MRR and ARR and what all that stuff meant. And I'm like, all right, I'll, 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 I'll I made a lot of money in, in real estate. Let me put it all into this idea that mm -hmm. should help our industry massively. And the rest, as she say, is, uh, it's what brought me to where I am today. I've spent the last mm -hmm. three years building an amazing technology and my real estate business is Long story short, it whittled down to almost nothing and lost everybody because I was trying to serve two mm. places and learned you can't necessarily do that. Yep. Um, now it's a very small wholesaling operation. And I actually just had a meeting this morning with uh, an ex hedge fund guy that's going to come in and be the CEO and blow it back up without cool. my time. It's exciting. Yeah, pretty man. excited about that. That was uh, yeah. I've been working on that for two months. So I'm very excited that it's going to come to fruition. The Dude, other, that's that's exciting. The other thing you should talk about is you were the creator of data stacking and list oh, stacking. I mean, that's yeah. That, I forget me, that was when I found out. <laughs> that was what really got me super super excited. You should share yeah. that because yeah, I um, will. That, okay. In the process that you write, in the process of becoming a software guy, one of my good friends was like, "Hey, dude." I'm trying to figure out what to do with all this data. And he was, he was actually a massive mail. Well, not massive once I met you, but they do a couple hundred thousand postcards a month. Right. And he was like, I know I'm wasting money on all this data. I know there's crossover. I paid a bunch of people to build me an Excel thing and it just keeps crashing. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, well, I'm, I'm a software guy now. So let me look at it. Sounds like an intriguing marketing idea. Mm. And so, yeah, what happened is he gave it to us and I'm like, look, I'll make you a deal. I will build it for you, but I want to build a business off of it because it complements everything that I do. And it, it organizes and stacks all of your data. So you're no longer wasting money on marketing. So that was property list. Well, still is property list manager yep. now underneath the umbrella of real estate investor.com as well. We're literally like, I can promise you, if you don't have that, you're, and you're doing any kind of direct mail, cold calling to any, any offline outreach, you are wasting marketing dollars 100%. I've got 100 million property addresses and data to support my opinion, and it's just right. <laughs> you're throwing away 90% of your marketing dollars because you're going after everybody and you absolutely do not need to. Mm -hmm. Those people will be found by using carrot. I got the data to support that. The other 10% are the ones you should be getting offline because it's the only way you're going to get them. Yep. I love, I That's love it. it.
Dude, I, I love it. And, and Gary, so you've, you've been doing this for shoot 16 years now, which is great, crazy. You know, time flies by that fast. My first property that I bought was 2004 as well. Uh, four unit apartment building there by the college that I went to the whole Carlton sheets thing, no money down. Like I still own that building today and, and picked up some more in the way. But what, as, as you, as you were investing that leading into what you guys do in real estate investor.com, cause um, uh, you guys do a ton of direct mail. Like, uh, I, I guess if you're, if you're cool with sharing, how many direct mail pieces do you guys send out on a monthly basis? Yeah, we, uh, so we've sent out over well over now over 50 million pieces of direct mail. I think what we're, what we're known for is drip, uh, mm-hmm. you know, just like a follow-up sequence. It is like, how do you make it massively, uh, seek, uh, it's data driven and, and also sequential. So just out sending out postcards is not very hard, but actually how do you time it? And how do you make it consistent? What day of the week does it need to land in the mailbox? Hmm. Um, what's the secret sauce to get the highest response rate? And so we've been perfecting that uh, for years. I've got what's really interesting. It's even better now that we've merged together with Robert is, is we've got every metric and statistic on what works, where in the country, the ups and the downs, different colors. <clears throat> um, I mean, we've tried everything. I, I, I actually, before this, I pulled... We've actually mailed out, we've set up and mailed out over 400 different types of things. I mean, like FedEx packages and, and, and handwritten letters and offers, um, check letters. We've done green and red and black. We put stuff in, you know, all the lumpy mail back in the day. And um, it's really interesting. I've got some of those metrics to share. We were the inventor of the, the super, what's called blind copy. So that was, uh, you know, Chris Chico. Chris Chico yep. and I started REI vault. Um, he gave me a formula and that was an absolutely, everybody was copying that. Um, and so we've been really good at perfecting direct mail. We've done over 50 million pieces. I think we're at about a million and a half right now a Mm. month. It might actually be a little higher than that. Um, we've got multiple mail houses. The great thing about what we're doing is we, because of our volume, we get massive negotiation powers and some of these mail houses actually don't make any money off of the mailing. They do it for volume to mm-hmm. keep their machines running for their staff. And so we're able to buy and do things with the data that most people can't. I think there's only one individual that I know he sells his list for 30,000 bucks a year um, because it's not just buying the list because everybody's doing it. It's how do you actually get massively targeted? We can talk about that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Marketing, people really miss the boat. You got traffic just like online, um, online and going online for your deals, offline marketing, you got marketing or traffic, and then you got conversion, which is the sales process. And mm-hmm. you have to have both of them. And so the, 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 you, the direct mail will get the response, but it's really the follow-up and then the phone team uh, to, to, to do all the work. And there's a massive, we call that mining and refining. Okay. So the, the mining of the data is that all the follow-up sequences at the right timing, we're gonna, we can talk about that text and ringless voicemail, um, uh, email, follow-up marketing, like postcards and follow-up letters, and then mm-hmm. into a dialing system. And so a couple of years ago, we made the decision because of the market need to go build a phone team. So I've got a really, really solid rock star. We call them sales ninjas that actually do all the dialing for dollars. So we have, we have the capability. We don't do it for everybody. Um, but with real estate investor.com, they can come to us and say, Hey, we'd like to have you actually schedule appointments. And so I got the team where the, the leads come in and then they're relentlessly working those leads, you know, for, for, for months and sometimes years to get the seller on the phone at the right time you know, pre-screen them, ask all the questions, the perfect script, um, and then into an appointment that we then pass on to our member to go close. And gotcha. I like it. I love that. I think we've done close to 4 million of those seller calls. Mm. So, Dude, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. I'll give everybody a little trick, a little technique yeah. right now. This is this one of the benefits of having a shared kind of team, the way we've built it is, uh, we, we, we have a full-time guy, that does nothing but quality check every one of the VAs or every one of the uh, phone people, um, you know, on, on the conversion rates and and how many dials does it take to get a connection into Mm -hmm. a qualified appointment? Right. And so, um, I never thought, I never thought I could build an offshore team. 
I just didn't think we could do that. And not only have we done that, but we've turned it into one of the best selling points. And, 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 and if anybody's out there listening to this right now, write this down. And if you've got a, an offshore phone person, that one of the questions the seller will ask is, where are you calling from? If they hear any accent at all. And so we've actually, every single day, we embrace those objections and we mm -hmm. come up with the perfect words to forward the sale. So our team is scripted where they'll say, I'm, ca I'm actually calling from the Philippines. Um, Trevor or whoever our member is, Trevor Mock or Gary Boomershine or insert your name, hired me in the Philippines so he or she can pay higher prices for properties. Mm. And how am I doing? Is there any feedback that I could give to Mr. Mock mm. on how I'm doing? And we have a hundred percent stick rate with the sellers. Yeah. They love it and it forwards the conversation. That's so we cool. now want them to ask that because they see it as a benefit. It's awesome. Dude, that's, that, that's really good right there. So guys and gals, I, I, I have had people say, Hey, I don't want to have someone offshore because of those reasons, but right there, dude. So I, I heard a, a quote from a buddy of mine. I've talked about it in the podcast before. Uh, his name is Ben Settle, good friend of mine. And, um, he's one of the best copywriters you know, out there. And he said he heard from one of his mentors, uh, that everybody's got skeletons in the closet, right? We all have them personally. We all have them professionally. And he said, what happens is, is when, when people find your skeletons, uh, then they found them and therefore your credibility and trust just dropped through the floor, right? He said, what you need to do is you need to take your skeletons out of the closet and show them. And he said, you got to make them dance. And, and what he means by making your skeletons dance is you put them out in front of your prospect. The things that you think are going to be detractors on the sale, like over overseas or making low off, like what are all these things that you're trying to kind of hide from that seller or buyer, take them out instead and put them out there in front and make them dance and make them be a sales point. Just like that one. Right? That's perfect. So guys use that one, make that skeleton dance and start to write down every other thing in your business that you're, that you're kind of consciously or subconsciously trying to pull back and, and hope that the seller or buyer doesn't talk about, write them all down and go, cool. How do I talk about these instead? So I bring them up and they don't have to, you gain so much trust that way. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. I brought a, you know, a lot of us were CG, uh, you know, you know, you were there and I was mm -hmm. there and I brought a bunch of, uh, some of the top guys out of that mastermind and, and from REI vault that, that, uh, that, you know, claim manship was with us and Steve Carlson, these are all seven figure guys. And we said, Hey, how do we come up with the right, the perfect script mm -hmm. of what to ask with the right icebreaker, uh, with the right words to, to get the right response from a seller. And, and so that's what we trained. It's a, it's a script. Um, we get them, but we want them unscripted. It doesn't want, we don't want our, our phone team, right? It, it goes back to the, they got to be knowledgeable as all heck. They be, they need to be sharp as a tack and they need to be super, super friendly. Right. And the phone team, they typically, we call that an, that the industry term across all industries is an ISA. It's an inside sales agent. And I think this is one of the biggest holes that most people have in their business that they, they have marketing, they may have marketing and they may ha even have a system, but they forget that you actually have to talk to people. We mm -hmm. don't make money in this business without talking to people. And so there's two kind of, you got the inside sales team that is dialing for dollars all day long. And then you got sales acquisitions. That's typically us unless we've hired somebody and that's the closer. Mm. And most businesses, they try to combine those together. And if they, you know, you really, it's two teams <laughs> because if you want to, to really make money in this business, you want a full-time person, they can dial manually 125 dials mm. a day, 25 seller numbers. They're going to connect with about 18 and they're going to get about one and a half appointments. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's the, that is the baseline. Yep. Um, if they're on an auto dialer, you could typically get up to about 250 to 300 of follow-up. Now, cold calling is probably double that, but you know, that's a missing component because it's all the follow-up. What <clears throat> Robert, I know you're going to cover this, but Harvard study, this is proven. This has been around for a long time, but 90% of the profits in our business off of the online or offline are going to come from the sixth interaction with the seller or later mm -hmm. and less than 10% of any agent or investor follows up with a seller more than twice. Yep. It's shocking. We actually, <clears throat> Robert and I were doing a presentation uh, discussion with our members 
thirty percent of all leads aren't even touched. Mm-hmm. They're not I, even. I, I believe content, it. Right, and so yep. people, it's like they're throwing massive amounts of money. There's massive profits. The profits is in the follow up, and um, you know, even even Google. It's like Google. It's like all about the follow up. Why mm-hmm. why do we get emails in our inbox every day? It's because. Yep. Dude, let, let's let's dive over to the follow up side of it right now because I think that's one thing, especially especially right now, while you know the market is competitive, um, people are spending a lot of money on marketing. Right now, we're at the tail end of the whole kind of COVID stuff. States are starting to unlock right now, so we're starting to see the conversion rates on on the websites go way back up to they're they're above where they were before now, which is we called that, and, and it's happening uh, what we thought would. And and you were mentioning before we before we hit recording here, Gary, too, that you guys are seeing those conversion rates go back up as well, or the response rates go back up on direct mail. Um, and that's something guys and gals that you're listening to this response rates and conversion for any and all marketing during kind of the, the depths of COVID did reduce a little bit, depends on the type of marketing, depends on the stuff, but it did reduce a little bit, but it didn't, it, what did not reduce was the demand. So during that time, let's say someone actually got a, a direct mail piece or a cold call, or they went onto a carrot site, you know, let's say the month before, two months before COVID hit, um, a lot of investors were shutting off their, their their campaigns all together and they weren't following up with their people. So what would you guys suggest if you were to get a lead through a carrot website or you're doing direct mail or whatever it is, what's the best mix of follow-up that you guys are seeing is working right now to nurture those sellers uh, all the way over to a close? Yeah, I'll start um, with, I'll use carrot specifically, right? Cause this is where this one point I'm going to bring up is even more important there than in others and still important. So there's a, a rule, a fact, right? That if you respond and your response to someone reaching out to you is more than 15 minutes, you have already got a 400% chance of not getting anything. And every minute beyond that, it goes down even worse. Why I said, I want to start with carrot is, it's less than five minutes when it's an online reach, right? So at five minutes, you, you probably already lost them. They probably went to somebody else's website. They're probably already looking for something because they want instant gratification when they're online. So from a follow-up perspective, you absolutely, and especially let's use carry, right? So I know you guys collect the email, right? So you have an email, you should be shooting an email out, but you should also have on your form the ability to get the phone number. And if you can get the phone number, you should, if you have the capability, call right away. Like within, yep. uh, as soon as you get that form, you're, someone on your team is dialing them. The next best thing to that is going to be, and I don't, I don't believe in instant. A lot of people take this to the wrong degree, right? So when you send a instant message, which is what a lot of people do when they do have a system, yep. is you have instantly told people that you are not a real person and they know it and you know it. Yep. You know it. You know when you get an instant message, right? Yep. So it should be delayed on purpose for about a minute or two, then the message should go out and the text should say, thanks for taking the time to be on my website. I'd love to learn more about your property and see if we can do a deal. And why do I say it that way? Because it's very specific to where they came from and who they are. And if you just have a generic message, you probably already lost them anyways, because I don't even know if you understand what they did. Yep. And then if you want to add to that, like we do in our software, you should also have a ringless voicemail drop that calls them and leaves the voicemail saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. So they feel like you tried to call them, you tried to text them. Oh, they got an email too, right? So mm-hmm. all three of those touch points matter because, and if you could physically get on the phone with them and try it again, even better. We just designed that tool the way we did so that it buys you those instant minutes for your yeah. team to get on the phone with them and try them or answer the call when it comes back in. Cause they say, Oh, I missed this call. I missed this text. Let me call them. Right. So all of that is, taking full advantage of day one. Now, here's the thing. Gary said it earlier in Harvard study, right? 90% of the time, you're not getting the deal on the first call anyways. It is highly important though, because you're setting the stage. And if you don't, but this is where I think most investors fall off. Most investors only follow up once or twice. So even if they get this right, they're like, oh, I didn't get the deal. They don't want it. They want retail. There's never going to be a deal. Wrong. They just weren't ready that moment or they didn't want to concede the price. Just like you don't when you walk in a store and they say, what are you here for? And you say, I'm just shopping, even if yeah. you're there for something specific. It's natural response in a human, right? That's where in the next coming days, I need to follow up again. In the coming weeks, I need to follow up again. In the coming months, I need to repeat my message. Mm-hmm. And when does that stop? When we do a deal. 
Yep. That's when it stops. There is no other time that you stop doing that. And that's the missing component. And that's why all the big players, seven figures plus, are the guys that do that. Mm-hmm. I, I would probably, at least 90% of them, some might get lucky, but 90% of them are because they're really good at follow up. And they're doing it not only in those three touch points. I would add when you get into the later stages, you should be sending thank you cards or mm-hmm. handwritten letters or something to make yourself stand out. And we're just talking about sellers. You should do yep. the same thing for buyers, agents, investors, you name it, all specific, all correct in the way you talk to them and not stopping. You're furthering the relationship and that's what it all should be about. Man, so I, I want to break it down a little bit here. So let's say let's say it's a seller lead that came in. Um, how many? So in that first twenty four hours, it sounds like you're getting them with all three approaches, right? Email, text, uh, RVM. So ringing this voicemail. Uh, what about the whole month though? Like how how many times if if it's not moving towards a negotiation or an offer or whatever, uh, how many times do you reach out to that seller during the month? And kind of what's a a rough overall mix? Is it like well, I'm going to drop a text today and then an email next week? Kind of what's that look that first month look like? Yes, yeah, so I'll give you my perspective, and I I will say this really comes, I'll give you an opinion based on my dad. Cool. And then I will say, everyone's going to have a different opinion and they got to do what fits their style. Okay. So me personally, in the first week, you want to be aggressive in the very beginning, meaning they just reached out to you. It is Mm -hmm. the hottest time to connect. So instantly, right. And when I say instantly, I mean, within minutes, right. So you hit the time frame. If they don't reply that day and you don't get a hold of them, nothing further is I'd reach out again tomorrow and I'd reach out with all three. At that point, depending, I may reach out on day three, I may reach out on day four. This is where style and personality comes in. Personally, I'm going on day three and I'm hitting them again. Then I'm going to take two days off. So I don't feel like I'm, I'm, you know, desperate. Right. So in the first week I would have anywhere from three to four touches, most of it front loaded. Mm. Then as I pass day seven, I'm going to back off. I'm probably going to be day 10, 11. And I, and I do, and I'm doing all three. Right. I'm I'm at all three each time. If you want to sporadic them out, I would, they would parse out a little bit in timing, but they would be the same day. Mm -hmm. And generally I would say voicemail, text message, and then email and that. And and, and a phone person as a, as a note. Yeah. If you physically can call or have a phone person on your team, your person should be calling every day on top of this. Right. So in the beginning, I would even add on a phone call on top of a voice drop. So you even have more. Mm -hmm. Right. And then after the first week, then I'd start breaking it out. And for the rest of the first month, I would probably be every three to five days and still be semi-aggressive, but not overly aggressive because there's some reason they went dark, but I'm still going to reach out my messaging and the style I'm saying something in would change, hmm. right? To, to entice the fact that I, I know they didn't just reach out to me anymore. So I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say what I'm trying to reach out and just see, hey, maybe, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I said something wrong. Maybe I did something to offend you. Right. I'm going to be very personable in, in what I'm styling. Now, by the end of the month, I'm triggering and sending mail because now they've not responded to email. They're not responding to text. They're not responding to voicemail. They're not picking up my phone calls. Maybe I need to get something in the mailbox to get them back on the board with me. Gotcha. And then for me, tallying it out after that, I will probably spend personally and other people have differing opinions for the next two months, you know, so months, months, two and three, I'm going to reach out every 10 to 14 days with a mixture of the above. Um, I'm still doing all of them and yep. monthly would be my mail piece. I, I wouldn't overdo that piece and it would be different. So I'd have it slightly different. I'd approach what I'm saying. And, and mind you, if it furthers at any point, I'm stopping the whole sequence and you know, Gary and I have said this well, and I'll say it again. The truth is if you don't fully automate all of that, it's, it's not going to get done. Yep. 99% 99 chance it won't get done. I was going to say the other thing that's really interesting, and we got to build a slide on this because we've been talking about it and getting the data on this, but it costs 10 times more to generate the initial lead than all of the follow-up combined. Mm. 10 10 times. The money is in the follow-up, but it costs more money to get the lead. And so people, the mindset is the lead, you know, you're not going to find the perfect list or the perfect fairy dust motivated seller. It doesn't exist. I'll explain that. The perfect motivated seller is going to come through the right follow-up sequence. And how long does that last? It should last a year or two years. There's another Mm -hmm. piece that people forget. It is the psychology of a seller. And this is pure sales. Not all sellers are ready yet 
they go through a psychological process of kind of discovery, right? They go through different levels. I, I call it what we're looking for is not necessarily the motivated seller. We're looking for the reasonable seller. Mm. So sometimes, especially if we're going off market, we're going out to them versus them coming online searching for us. But they're gonna, they're, there's a psychological point in time where they're, they're actually ready to sign on the, the line that's dotted, yep. right? And that might take a month. It might take two months. It's an emotional decision. This is one of the biggest uh, uh, price points in their entire life, right? Their assets. Yep. And so many people are missing that. And so they, they, they jump in wanting to make the offer sometimes a little too fast. It, you, it is, it is a, it's an embracing that, hey, there's lead generation, there's lead management, right, in the follow-up, and there's the phone component. And mm. if you get that right and you just embrace the fact that, hey, my average sales cycle, like off of direct mail, it's probably about four months, mm -hmm. four to five months from the time you get the initial lead to the time that you're going to actually get that deal, like signed, sealed, and delivered on average. And so everybody's so focused on right now. You want to build a sustainable business like any other business. It's classic marketing and sales. So, you know, what, what you're doing today is really going to produce most of your results in month four, month five, month six. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're going to get what I call the bluebirds. There's going to be a small percentage. Um, in fact, uh, the statistic, this is a national worldwide statistic actually is 3%, 2.7% of deals come off of that initial uh, gotcha. lead. So 97% mm -hmm. or, or even higher are going to come, you know, a week later, two weeks later, we have a gal. Uh, Cheryl Twilley, she, I love this gal. I talked to her for years about consistent, long-term drip direct mail. And she was canceling. Uh, this is REI Vault a few years ago, and she was canceling. And she called me. I got a text message, and she said, hey, I want you to know, Gary, I love the service. You guys have made me a ton of money, but I'm not canceling because I don't like the service. She said, you remember you were telling me about the follow-up? She said, so a seller had been getting the same postcard that you guys have been mailing for two years. Mm -hmm. She finally called and all the follow-up that we were doing, she finally called and she goes, you know, Cheryl, she goes, you have worked harder than anybody else to earn my business. I want you to know I've kept every one of your postcards and I'm <laughs> finally ready to sell. And Cheryl said, Gary, I made my husband and I made $800,000 in cash Jeez. and we're taking a year off. We're traveling the world. That is cool. So, so it's That's really, cool. it truly yeah. is the follow up, and all of the big players are, are really good at this. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's some people, they just, it's just, it's the best practice, right? Embrace this little follow up plus a phone team, mm -hmm. right? Uh, want a system and good yeah. resources and uh, you know, where a lot of investors get stuck is they try to do everything themselves. Yeah. Right. And then they go off this way and that way they're looking for the secret mailing list. They're looking for the new SEO or the new, they think, Oh, this website's not good. I got to go to this different website. It's like, no, mm -hmm. you're three feet from gold. You almost are there. Yep. You just need to impl implement this one last piece. Man, and one, one thing I want to drill down on further too, you know, with everyone listening to this is, is once again, as, as we're in a pretty darn competitive market for both the retail side and the, and the, the wholesale side, uh, that follow-up is, is even more important because like we said, we're, you're spending a bunch of money up front on leads. And then a lot of investors I talk to, a lot of wholesalers, everything's got to fit in this pretty little box of this, you know, wholesale, uh, uh, you know, looking deal and then everything else they throw away. Or if, if they can't get anything the first month and they're throwing it away or they're not doing anything with it. And um, I know for Carrot too, and I can, I can even relate to this personally where uh, you guys probably know him, Alex Pardo, been a client of ours for years. Um, and he, uh, uh, we were, we were partnering with him on deals in Miami. And this is probably eight months ago. He hit me up, he text messaged me and he said, Hey, what's your wire information? And, and I said, why? And he goes, well, we have a deal that we got the lead on two years ago, two years ago that we just now finally closed on. I said, well, what happened? And it was the same thing. Well, uh, we were following up every month, calling, emailing, texting. And finally this person got around to being actually serious to sell. And we were the only ones there. And um, guys, it's really, really important. So if you guys are looking at it going, well, shoot, I need money now though, not two years from now. Because the thing is, if you look back, if you're, if you're sitting where you are right now, look back and go, man, don't I wish I put something in two years ago that would be feeding me leads and deals today of, from work I did two years ago. And so it's kind of like the whole adage of when's the right time to plant a tree. Well, uh, yesterday or 20 years ago, but the best time, best, best next time is now. 
And so one of the things that we do at Carrot is we're really good at helping you guys get the really high quality, most motivated, consistent, predictable, motivated seller and buyer leads uh, coming through the organic side or coming through the paid side. And then we integrate with great tools like realestateinvestor.com that then you guys can pass it through. If you don't want to use our simple lead manager, uh, you can use uh, their really robust lead manager. You can use all their follow-up, the automates, the text, the email, uh, the RVMs, and they have the other services like Gary was talking where you can then plug in their phone callers where their phone call team will follow up on stuff. Um, and so that's the power of it. There's a, a lot of amazing tools out there that can help you guys to get more leverage of your time and your business. And those are things we're going to be working really hard here at care to continue to integrate into, into our system better, to continue to find ways to make the leads you're getting from carrot uh, convert even better than they already do before. Uh, this is a stat that we shared when I was on a call with, uh, with Robert and Gary a couple weeks ago, that on average, we have found uh, a direct mail lead. Let's, say, let's go radio and TV. Radio and TV on average close about one in 40 to one in 60 leads into a deal. Uh, right after this call, I'm hopping on with an investor, Chris Arnold, who does a ton of radio. Oh, and yeah. so we're going to be doing something with him. And then uh, uh, the direct mail is somewhere between the one in, 20, one in 20 to one in 40, depending on your list quality and all those kinds of things, right? Um, and then PPC is anywhere between one in 10 to one in 20 usually. Uh, SEO organic is somewhere between one in eight and one in, one in 15. And so if you start to look at those different things, go, I'm going to do a mix of marketing. I'm going to, I'm going to go outbound, which gives me my volume. Okay. So your volume is going to come from your outbound. If you're really wanting to scale, uh, we have a lot of customers, guys and gals that are doing between two and four, two and five deals a month just from SEO. But if you want to do 15 to 20, um, you know, if you want to do 10 deals a month from SEO, you're going to have to meet a bunch of different markets. It's probably gonna be hard to do it just in one market, uh, unless you're in Dallas or something like that. We, we have clients in Dallas that are doing hundreds of thousands of dollars in wholesale fees a month just from online. But it's, you got to be in a monstrous market for that. So if you want to be in a market like Eugene, Oregon or Portland, Oregon, you're not going to pull out your two to five deals a month from SEO or PPC. You might be able to get to that, but if you want to get to 10, you got to go outbound. You got to go outbound to, to get the, to get the broad reach. And that's where the follow-up comes in. So Gary and Robert, um, I, man, I, I could chat with you guys forever on this stuff. And we dropped some really good stuff on how to follow up with your leads better, what to do with dripping your direct mail out there as well. Not just the, not just the, the text and email, um, you know, that tip on that tip on what to say with, if you have an overseas VA was awesome. I love that. So take that skeleton and make it dance y'all. But what's the way if, if someone wanted to their care, care member, they wanted to go, Hey, I want to plug in with what realestateinvestor.com has. I don't make any money by, by saying this in this call, guys, but they want to plug in with what you guys have. Um, what are the best ways that they can do that? And kind of what do you guys do for investors and agents? Yeah. So they would go to realestateinvestor.com. Literally, there's a tab at the top to make it simpler for them. They can click get started when they land there, or they can click mm -hmm. on the products and go through what we offer and click on the one that's of most interest. It'll take them through a guided process to schedule a call or get their service with us. And then if you already have Carrot, as soon as you sign up, just let us know you have Carrot. We integrate Carrot sites fully, no cost for you inside of realestateinvestor.com. So you have a seamless flow into our system and connections. I love it. Yeah. You know, we built, what we've built is we said, hey, how can we offer the most value to this community? And we've got for people that are brand new. Originally, REI Vault was really just for the you know, this high six and seven figure real estate investors. And so when we came together, we said, how can we service the whole market? So we have what's called touch touch is just the, the real it's, it's, it's on steroids. It's follow up on steroids that plugs right into carrot that you, people can get started. Um, we've got the extended version we call grow, which is a full fledged CRM. It's not podio polio is what we're calling it. <laughs> um, that's not only the, fo the follow up, but it's also fully integrated with contracts and the buyers and the, everything that you'd need. There's no other tools that you have. And then for people that want, and there's flavors where they can actually have our built in phone team, um, mm -hmm. that can actually work the leads, uh, on demand if they want. Um, actually picking up the phone and following up. And then we have kind of our, 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 our premiere is for really the done for you. We call that manage. That's the old REI vault that sits on top of everything else. And that's mm -hmm. where we can manage everybody's direct mail. If they want uh, full, you know, full integrated phone team, bring as many leads from as many sources and our team will work them professionally 
And uh, if they, we've got cold calling as, as an example as well, somebody wants full-time cold calling <clears throat> on top of everything else. So um, best thing is to go to realestateinvestor.com. Love people. A lot of people say, man, you guys have given us a lot of information. Uh, we've got a podcast as well, realestateinvestor.com huddle. And uh, uh, we, we've got a public group called Real Estate Investor Beacon as the beacon of light. We're both faith-based guys like you, yep. Trevor. And it's like, how can we deliver as much value and interview people of what's working right now uh, while we're in this sort of new new period, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is, yep. I, I think this is one of the biggest transformations of wealth. This is what real estate investors have been looking for. It's the cycle that we all wanna prepare for. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, love uh, and love feedback from people what else they need dude i i, I love it I, I love it and guys go check it check it out realestateinvestor.com before i let you guys off the hook i want to go back up to robert really quick so i see it at dude i i see it at the start we talked about the 75 hard uh i've been on a similar journey not not that exact one but taking a challenge you know for me challenge is three things it's time-based it's specific and there's accountability and so you set off over 75 days ago now because you you, yeah. you hit your 75 day a uh, week or two ago um dude what what were what were you seeing in your life robert um that made you want to really go hey i i need to get my edge back i i i want to take this challenge and explain what the challenge is because it's hard it's not just like getting up and drinking orange juice every day for 75 days so like what is it and what kind of spurred you on to make that change but now what are you seeing what changes have you seen uh, in yourself since then yeah, so I, I've known about it for a little over a year, tried it before, it failed miserably in the first few weeks, um, came back across it this year, and there's been a, a resonating thing for me, right? As a guy who loves to challenge himself in general mm -hmm. and loves to push myself, I started doing some really deep work mentally over this last, you know, moving into the two years and merging the company freed up some time for me and opened the door to really go deep on myself and my mental game. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's what intrigued me about 75 hard because there were some limiting things. Like I've been a health nut. I've been training my whole life, but I've had ups and downs with my weight because of my DNA and any excuse I want to make up. Right. Mm -hmm. Reality is I love food and I love chocolate <laughs> and peanut butter and ice cream and brownies and cookies. So for me, the biggest part was there were some things in it. So 75 hard is this, you have to do and this is what throws people off because this is what makes you think it's a fitness program and it's not. Mm -hmm. Two, 45 minute workouts per day, one has to be outside. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what you do, walk, run, jog, lift weights, whatever, but just 45 minutes, one outside. Drink one gallon of water per day, read 10 pages of a physical book, non-fictional business or furthering your mindset, you know, some, something that's gonna grow you. And, um, oh, pick any diet program you want, structured meal plan, whatever you want to call it, rule of zero cheat meals and zero alcohol for the entire 75 days. And you take a progress picture of yourself daily. Mm. All of them have a mental component to why you do it. So if you hear that, you say, oh, that's easy. Some of it probably is for you. Mm -hmm. Some of it probably is not. Yep. You, if you miss any of that on any day, you start back over at day one. Yep. And the mental challenge comes into the things you don't think about like, oh, outside workout is great. Yeah, I live in Florida, I thought so too, except for the day it was pouring outside and I still got to do it, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, taking a picture of myself, that's simple every day, except for there's a mental challenge that you feel some type of way about your body and you don't want to look at it and take a picture every day, mm. right? And for me, the biggest component I wanted was the man, the hardest thing I have is breaking this addiction to food. And I, I had a mental therapist actually help me with part of it was like a connection to bonding with my father and ice cream was something from a childhood memory, right? So we unpacked that 75 hard abolished it, right? Like I don't, I, I love ice cream and I joke, but I actually could care less if I eat it right now. I ate it once on day 76 and I haven't had it since in the last two weeks and I don't care. I'm on to the next challenge. So what changed? A lot right? It, it showed me that as much as I thought I was focused on growth and mental aspects of my life, I wasn't. I made up so many excuses to make things easier for me than doing the hard thing that was in front of me, right? I'll put off to tomorrow reading because 
oh, I didn't do it this morning. It's okay. I'm still going to read. I still read more than the average person. Wow. How much I actually pushed that, put that off and didn't realize Mm -hmm. the other cool thing that it showed you said the thing about social media, right? But this carries all over the place. You said, oh, I see somebody post something two, three, four times. Cool, whatever. Weeks on end, though, there's something changing and being rewired. Yep. The real interesting thing for me is I've done a lot of physical things and diet challenges and all that. And my wife is never 100% on board with them, right? It's almost like she's counterproductive. Hey, you want these brownies <laughs> I just made? Like, no, it's not what I'm supposed to have. This challenge, once I made it like probably about half, halfway or so, I started to notice a shift in my entire household mm. where it was literally down to, I messed up my day and my wife, normally I, I take my two year old at night and I'm the one that spends most of the time with them. And she literally would say, knowing I had another 45 minutes to do like, Hey, he's kind of peaceful right now. Why don't you go do your workout? Mm. What do you, Hey, what do you need me to modify in our meal plan today? So you can eat what we're eating and have dinner with us. Yep. I was like, wow, this is really cool. So the more you do things and you change yourself, everyone around you changes dude dude and when you try to change them you don't get that you don't get what you're looking for all change starts with michael jackson said it best all change starts with looking at the man in the mirror change him i want to add i want to add something because i i was 50 pounds heavier and uh than i am and and i think there's three components uh, you know a lot of us investors we get back on the hobbit wheel i think part of it is that you know we got into this business for financial freedom mm-hmm. and a new lifestyle and we get trapped in the job and and i think it's it is a very trap because i think our whole society has been indoctrinating us from like day one to be a slave in the system right yep. there are three components there's wealth there's health and there's relationships and one does not balance with the other so a lot of people get focused on just making money and everything else uh, goes out of balance. You know, Rob Swanson was, we were all together in Tampa. You were there, you were speaking on stage. Rob came in and said, you know, I I wrote this down and it's like a person that doesn't have money has a thousand wishes. An unhealthy, sick person only has one. Mm -hmm. And it's really true. And I think, you know, for me, the fastest thing in my life, A, it's commitment. It's, you got to be committed. If you're not committed, you won't do it. Diets don't work. You have to be committed, uh, uh, number one. Number two, the easy route is do you just get a coach. Mm-hmm. I mean, Robert, you have a coach. I have a coach. Yeah, Anything. I have, I, have cor- I have four coaches in my life. That would be the only added thing I'd say. Whatever you need, you get a personal accountability coach in that area, whether it's real estate, whether it's, uh, you know, weight, you know, weights and training and health or whatever. And that's the easiest thing. It's somebody to hold you accountable and and knows our blind spots. It's the, Mm. it's the, it's the fastest is guaranteed success. It's success insurance doing it that way. So Mm -hmm. hopefully that, hopefully that adds to it. Cause it's hard. Oh, it's, 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 it's way hard. You know, like, like you're saying, Robert, it's the rewiring of the brain that happens in that process. And that, and that's the important part. Y'all, uh, we we've talked about it here in the carrot cast before go back and look at some of those episodes or listen to some of those episodes where I talk about how to create disciplines in your life, my process for doing that. Uh, guys, uh, I'm, I'm so pumped to, to have you guys on here. Uh, not only to talk about real estate stuff, but to talk about the life stuff, like we talked about, which is ultimately the reason that we do this. So appreciate mm-hmm. you guys, everybody go to real estate investor.com, uh, check it out over there. If it's something that you guys can plug into your business, uh, to make everything that you're doing at carrot more effective. I appreciate you guys big time. Continue being the lighthouse. Uh, like, like Dan Martell, uh, my coach and, and Rob, I know you work with Dan too. He says, be the lighthouse, not the tugboat. And that was the exact example that you were talking about there with your wife. It's you became the lighthouse after enough time. You didn't have to try to pull her through it. And then she sees it and then she's attracted to that, which is awesome. And that's what you guys are being for everybody in this podcast. So awesome. Thank you guys very much. Have an amazing rest of the week. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you guys. Thank you.